Hey guys, it's Izzy from Endless RVing, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about this guy right here. This is the Halo View rear camera, the RD7. You're not going to want to miss it. Following our hearts of them, we take a ride wherever. I always try to let my spirit fly, fly away. That's the only way to get that high. Guys, so the question of your RV, do you tow a car? How long is your tow vehicle? Do you have a way to see behind you when you're driving, when you're changing lanes? These are very important questions that you have to ask yourself when you have a motorhome because safety is paramount, it's number one. And that's why today we're gonna to talk about this Halo View rear view camera. So just a little backstory here and a disclaimer. Uh, we got contacted by the company of Halo View and they wanted us to, they were going to send us a product for free and they want us to give an honest opinion and feedback on it and that's what we're going to do. So you're going to want to stick through this whole video and you're going to want to watch because we're going to take you on a step-by-step -step unboxing and a detailed explanation on the features of this camera and also how to install this camera. So, some tools that you may need, that I think I'm gonna need, need for this job. Um, I'm gonna use some two-sided tape to try to mount this onto my roof. I'm gonna try to, if at all possible, not drill into my roof. And I think I could do that with some 3M VHB two-sided tape. You need some wire cutters, okay? And then this is a set of screwdrivers. I think that's all I'm gonna need, and maybe some die core. I'm not sure yet, because I don't really know what's in this box. We're gonna be doing that live for you. So they sent us a camera. They also sent us a magnetic mount. This is where I'm gonna put the two-sided tape on. I'm gonna tape it onto my roof, and then the camera's gonna go on the magnetic mount. They also sent us a battery. So this camera and the Halo View cameras, they could be powered in two ways. You could either hardwire them to your electrical system, like I told you earlier, we have a camera hardwired. Um, I could remove that camera. I could run the wiring for a second camera. I didn't want to do that. I want to make it a simple, clean install. So what I'm going to do, they also have the second way of powering this. It's going to be with a lithium ion battery. It has an 18 hour life before it needs to be charged. So that's going to be more than enough for almost everybody's road trips because you're really not going to be driving hopefully more than 18 hours. So. This is gonna allow me to mount without having to drill, cut, or tap. It's gonna make for a really clean install. So guys, the world debut, I hope you're ready for it. We're gonna do the live unboxing of the Halo View RD7 rear view camera right before your eyes, okay? So if there's any surprises, you're gonna be live with me during the unboxing, okay? All right, so we have our diagram and instructions here. So if you can see this, this is gonna be how you should be setting up the system, okay? This system, like I said, is set up for long range. So you're gonna have your camera, your power source, which for us is gonna be the lithium battery. There's gonna be cabling, 12 meters of cabling, and then there's gonna be a repeater here. That repeater is gonna be right above our front cap, and then there's gonna be a seven inch screen, which that repeater is gonna put the signal to. And hopefully, we're gonna see our rear view camera from our seven inch screen, okay? We got the owner's manual here. I will go over that off camera. And then let's just show some of these specs here. Anybody who wants to, uh, to see the specs, what's really important here, this is IP69 waterproof rating. So this is the real deal. It's uh, rated up to negative uh, 20 degrees Celsius um, and a range up to 80 degrees Celsius. So we should be good for most conditions. So this is gonna be the seven inch screen. This is gonna be mounted uh, somewhere on the dashboard. I have to figure that out, okay. These are gonna be uh, the cabling. If you're gonna hardwire uh, your system, this is gonna be the cabling for that. I'm gonna put this aside because I'm not gonna be using that. And these seem to be other adapters in here. I will we'll figure this out once we get ready to go. Here is gonna be the charger for the, uh, the monitor. It's gonna go somewhere in here. I'll figure that out once we have it ready to go. Here's your 12 meters of cabling. This is gonna run from the camera to the repeater. Here's the wireless transmitter. This is gonna be on the, uh, close to the front cap of the uh, motorhome. And here's the rear view camera, 
with the mount mounting bracket. This is pretty heavy duty, guys. This is uh, a, a uh, some kind of aluminum metal casing. This feels pretty heavy duty. It's claiming to be 720p, so it's uh, high def. And uh, we'll see how this works out. Let's see what else is in here. We have a mount. This is gonna be a mount for the monitor, okay? And then we have a myriad of antennas, all different antennas. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to try to get everything together here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna mount, find a place to mount the front monitor. Once I have that set up and powered up, I'll show you how it looks. Hey guys, if you like the video you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. Now back to the video. Guys, so I figured out a way where I'm gonna mount this. Just uh, for your information, it's gonna come with two screen mounting brackets. It's gonna come with this flat uh, two-sided tape bracket. It's also gonna come with a rounded, uh, kind of a squared off bracket, which you can actually physically screw into a location. I'm not gonna screw it in. I'm gonna use the two-sided tape, and I'll peel this off. It's 3M tape, okay? We're gonna peel this stuff off. And we found the spot, we kind of tested it prior to making sure it was a good spot. So this is where my, uh, this is where our stock rear view camera is, okay? So we want, this camera is gonna be set up as a, on a different angle, kind of shooting out behind the motorhome so we can really get a good picture of the 21 foot trailer that we're gonna be uh, towing. So that's really, this came at a perfect time, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make sure you clean the dash first, okay? We're going to stick it on here. And the reason why I'm sticking it on here is two, twofold. One, it's right above the uh, first camera. And secondly, my 12-volt connection, which this is going to go in, it's right there. So once this is all tidied up and we have everything set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, you know mount these really nicely. I'll kind of tie them in and kind of try to blend it in as quickly as, as best I can, so that way you know the, the wires are nice and neat. So this is stuck here. This ain't going anywhere. This is a 3M tape. This stuff's good to go. And if it does come loose, I'll use that VHB tape, and this will be stuck like glue. So you're going to just plug it in. You can see it power it on. It's not going to have a signal because the camera's not set up yet. If I hit this, you're going to see there's no signal. Okay. Antenna is adjustable and also the mount is adjustable. So if I loosen this back up, if you come over here and you can see this over here, All right? Let me flip the light on. Let's see. This is adjustable, so it's going to allow me to turn the angle if I want. I could also go up and down, right? And then I could tighten it. So I can turn this toward the driver. Now it's cranked down, it's nice and tight. And then I'll tighten this down nice. So this is set up, this is pretty rock steady here. We should be good to go. Next step, what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna get up on the roof, try to figure out how I'm gonna run the cabling and how I'm gonna set up that camera on the roof. Once we get up there, I'll walk it through and I'll bring it back to you exactly how we're gonna set it up. We've been out here for a couple minutes trying to figure out how to mount this uh, the least invasive way. Um, the easiest way would actually be to, to screw this down into the fiberglass um, initially, I wanted to put it here in the rubber, but shooting back when I tested it, there's too much reflection off the uh, fiberglass here, so that's not going to work. This position right here is going to give me a nice clear shot back, and it's going to be able to see the trailer clearly. So what I wanted to do first was to use this, uh, this rubber magnetic mount. The problem is there's no way to mount this because there's no metal here, right? So it's not going to stick. I try using the VHB tape on. Uh, it doesn't stick well to the rubber, so this this is no good. This ain't gonna work. Um, the other option, what I was, um, well, what I'm gonna do, the second option, I use the VHB tape just straight on the metal bracket here, and that that's holding really well. Once I mount the camera, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a nice bead of uh, die core around and uh, inside here just to really uh, make that adhesion better. Uh, you know, I'll run it inside here and really make it stick well this this is not going to go anywhere here i think we're going to be okay especially once i put the die core so what i'm going to do is uh i will get the bead of die core on here and then i'm going to mount the camera in here and i'll come back at you once that camera's mounted all right guys so we have where the back camera is going to go i'm not going to mount that you know screw it in and die core it so i know exactly that that's the spot's going to be but i'm pretty sure it's what's going to be my next thing i'm going to have to do is manage the cable right so the power is going to go from the battery down the cable 
and then the cable is going to run all the way to the transmitter to the front of the rig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage this cable. I'm going to run it uh, right along uh, the bead here and I'm just going to secure it down with these uh, 3M loops, these cable management loops. Okay, I'm going to keep it down nice and tight as best I can. Um, if I need to, I may run just a, a strip of a Eternabon tape to really, you know, cover it up nicely. I'm going to see how this looks. If I don't like it, I'll run the Eternabon tape over it. So that's going to take me a couple of minutes. Once it's all said and done, I'll come back at you and show you the, uh, the result of it. So I'm running the wire management probably, I don't know, that's eight inches or so. Uh, I'm not like measuring it out, I'm just kind of doing it by eye. But what's really good about this is that, I don't know if you can see this, the, the cable is actually kind of elevated a bit off the roof. So that's gonna allow any liquid, it's still gonna be able to run underneath. So we're not gonna get any liquid backing up, especially to get the condensation uh, drip off from the, uh, from the air condition. That was kind of my concern, but since this cable is elevated, that's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to keep running this down. It's a little time consuming. Uh, I'll keep running it down. And then uh, when it's all finished up, we'll, we'll come back and do a, a quick shot of all the cable uh, nicely tucked away. We are back out. Um, so we have everything set up the way we want. If you look here, uh, my wires are nicely uh, managed. Everything is nice and tight. Here's the battery. This is uh, two-sided tape down. And then this is going to be the port for where I want to charge it up. This has an 18-hour battery life uh, running the camera. So my final step here, I'm just going to, uh, in addition to the two-sided tape, I'm going to throw a bead of die core um, right on the inside here of the camera mat. And then over each place where I have a uh, wire management, I'm going to throw a, a dab of die core on there. So this is going to be rock solid. This is not going to move. I'm going to uh, show you the first one, I'm going to do it, and then there's no need to show everyone, but... So you just want to run a nice, this is a uh, die core self-leveling white. There's already two-sided tape on here, so the only thing you have to do is put a nice bead. This stuff is going to level itself off. And this stuff is extremely, uh, once it dries up, it's pretty sticky, so... I'm going to let that hit it around the seam. So this is going to be a little more insurance that um, this bracket's not gonna go anywhere. You can see it's already kind of running down a bit. So when I get some in there, all right, so we're good to go with that. That is gonna level itself off in a couple of minutes. When I mean level itself off, it's gonna kind of flatten out. So I'll just show you one more thing what I'm gonna do here. So for each one of these little uh, wire management pieces I have here, I'm just going to Throw some die core on it, and again, this stuff will level itself off, and it'll flatten out nicely. The good thing about the die core, this stuff is not permanent. So if I ever want to take this camera system off, I can do that, no problem. Scrape it up, this stuff will peel off. None of this is mounted permanently. There's no screws in the hole, in the uh, no holes in the roof, no screws in the roof. So you can choose to do this permanent if you want. I want to uh, keep it as minimally invasive as possible as you can see here this stuff is already starting to level off and this will be dry in um it'll be waterproof in about five minutes and in about 48 hours it'll be completely bonded and we'll be good to go so i'm going to run this you want to take a shot so every every piece of uh, wire management here i'm going to put a drop all the way down you can show them all the way down to the front it's going to take me probably half hour or so, but we'll get this done. And then we're going to come back at you inside the rig, show you all the features, show you where a final picture looks like, and we'll wrap it up. Guys, so since we're using the battery and we're not hardwired to a 12 volt system, there's going to be two ways to, uh, or actually three ways that I'm going to be able to charge up that battery. Just a note, it has an 18 hour runtime and approximately four hours to recharge is a 10,000 10, milliamp battery by Samsung. It's gonna be the Model X1 from Haloview, okay? So here's one way we could uh, recharge. We can run this in, uh, plug it into some kind of 12 volt outlet and uh, plug into the battery. This is, there'll be an input for the battery, okay? Second way, I can use a portable power bank that I have. This is a 12,000 milliamp battery. This should have enough juice to charge that up. Plug this in over here, okay? 
and then it's going to be a, a, a USB port that is going to actually plug, it has the same end as this, all right? So it's going to plug in that way. The third way that actually I'm hoping is going to work, I don't know if it is, um, I have, actually there's the USB port, okay? If I want to use the uh, battery bank. The third way which I'm hoping works is I have this, been having this laid around, it's a Goal Zero um, portable solar panel. It's made for like cell phones. I'm hoping that I can plug this in as such and then plug it into the uh, battery and if we have a sunny day, hopefully it charges up. If it doesn't work, I got the two other options. I got the battery pack or I can just simply run a wire, uh, a power wire, plug this in, plug it into a block and then put it right into the uh, shore power of the campground. So either way it's going to work or you could always hardwire it. Guys, so there's a couple of ways to mount this, okay? Um, right now, the way we have it mounted, I'm using the, um, the two-sided tape version. This is kind of like a uh, adjustable metal here, and then on the bottom, there's a 3M two-sided tape. So you see there's like a little feet here, and they kind of, they'll mold into whatever shape dashboard you have. So it, it's actually, I mean, this is on here rock solid. The other way that you can mount it, there's a metal bracket that comes around, uh, that comes in the package that you can actually screw into your dashboard. I didn't want to do that, but that is an option. If you want to mount it somewhere up here, or you know, you have a place to mount it, you can do that. That just wasn't the option we, went to, uh, we wanted to use. I just want to touch on how adjustable this is. So with this uh, two-sided tape mount, you have this, this screw over here. I have it cranked down really tight, but essentially if I unscrew this, I'll just be able to slide this monitor out and that's going to help stabilize the uh, right to left. Over here, if I unscrew this, now I can move, I can turn this however I want. I could also go up and down, okay? So it, it works really, really well. It's nice and adjustable. Uh, it's, it works really good. I just figured I wanted to give you guys um, that little feedback on how you could adjust this because as I'm sitting here, right, if I want to get it nice and tight just like that, I want to turn it a little, I can just adjust it and crank it down. So that's real nice. Unlike our stock, which is stationary and it's actually out of, kind of on a crappy angle. This thing is, is right here and right in my uh, peripheral over here on, on my uh, right side. So good option. We're going to come back with the uh, finished up install product. Guys, so we're back. Uh, everything is set up. It's done. Just a couple of things, okay? So we had originally, uh, we had the wire kind of coming around. That's an easy way to do it. You just wire and uh, plug into your 12 volt here. Uh, what I did was I removed this part of the dash here. It's just six screws. Very easy to do. Unscrew the six, pull it out. And then I took a Dremel tool and I just uh, carved out a little notch here. I literally uh, a four minute job uh, put it back on so that wire is nice and tucked into that notch then I ran the wiring behind and then brought it out up in this area on the bottom here and then plugged in and that's it screwed everything back in you don't have to do that I just wanted a clean look so uh, I chose to do that um, so let's go through um, you know the, the functions and the settings of this uh, Halo View RD7. So let me just show you here. These are the camera specifications uh, as per Halo View. I'll leave that up for a second. You guys can read that. It is a 720p uh, display and video. So that is high definition, okay? You got that? All right. Also, what you wanna do, it's gonna come with a protective screen protector, plastic one. You're gonna wanna peel that off, which I did already. This is a sunshade that comes with it. I install that, it just clicks right on. Okay, so any, if you have bright sunshine coming in, it's gonna help protect it. I wanna show you the major difference here. So this is our uh, stock camera that came on the base store, the Voyager camera. You can see uh, that is gonna, it's shooting directly down to almost a bumper of our motorhome. You can see the picture quality there. I'm hoping the camera picks it up. Now look at the halo view. We have this mounted uh, above the stock camera and you can see the picture quality it is significantly different, okay? Um, this is shooting back. That wall here, I don't know if you can pick that up where those trees are, that's probably about 40 to 50 feet behind the motorhome. Uh, these are your guidelines. 
This is gonna be huge for us uh, when we're towing the 21 foot trailer, even when we're not towing it, because now, whereas the stock camera, we couldn't really see the lanes behind us. We had the side view cameras, we had the uh, side view mirrors, but that back camera was almost useless seeing lanes behind us. Now with this new camera, we are seeing everything behind us, which is critical. Uh, also, the stock camera is below our uh, marker lights. So at nighttime, when those marker lights are on, you are getting a real strong red glow, which was washing out the picture. That shouldn't be an issue with the uh, new camera because the new camera is uh, mounted above the marker light. So it shouldn't wash it out. Also has night vision, I believe up to 12 feet. So I'm really uh, looking forward to putting this to the test. We have a long trip coming up to uh, DC. Uh, and that's where we're gonna come, come back with uh, the review and tell you, let you know how it's holding up. Just a note, we've had probably two inches of rain up here in Northern New Jersey. This has been out all night. Uh, it's working fine, okay? So let's go through the menu here. First thing you're gonna notice, and you may not see pick this up on the camera, on the upper left-hand side here, there is a, uh, a power signal, a Wi-Fi range signal, and it's at, I believe, uh, four to five bars. That's what you want. That means it's getting the full signal. It's good to go. Uh, so far, we've had this on. It's been steady. There's been no breakup in the picture. We'll see how that holds up while we're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour. But so far, stationary, it's been good to go. So we're gonna run through the menu here. Just know uh, with this system, you can wire up to four different cameras. We only have one camera wired up right now. So we're gonna go to menu. And over here, you have the volume adjustment. The rear view camera has a microphone built in and you could actually uh, monitor the sound outside. I have it down on mute right now, but just so you know, I'll turn it up a bit. And we live in the middle of the woods, so you're not gonna hear much of anything, but you might hear the uh, a little bit of humming out there. If you're at a campground or if you're anywhere, say you're sleeping at a truck stop and you wanna know if there's anybody around your rig, you can certainly uh, turn that on. Okay, let's go back to menu. We are gonna go over to the picture. You, here you could adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the color, okay? I'm not gonna do that, have it set the way I want. Let's go back to menu, move it over one to mirror. Mirror is gonna allow you to flip the camera. So right now we have it set up appropriately. This gate here is on my driver's side, on the left side, and that's how I want it. But if I want to flip it to the other side, now that gate is on my passenger side. So you can flip it depending how that camera is oriented you can flip it how you want. So let's go back and put it back the correct way and get out of this. Let's move on to Q mode. So you can split the screen different ways. You can have camera one and two, one and three, one and four, and so on and so on in here. We only have one camera. This is not really in play for us, but if you have multiple cameras, you can show, uh, the display can show what cameras you want on there. Okay, let's go to settings. Setting, you have your time and date, which I have set up. The time is in military time. It's now 4.09, which would be 16.09 military time. You have uh, the selection key for, this looks like this times out after a couple seconds, so don't mind that, uh, for your different cameras. And then you have uh, how the video is gonna display in either PAL or NTSC, the two standards. And then you have your auto dim. So if you are in uh, dark weather, as the light starts uh, coming down, uh, starts getting more dim, you're gonna, you're gonna want this uh, display to start dimming down. I have it right now on on. I'm assuming that the camera has some kind of sensor in it that once the light starts uh, reducing, it's gonna reduce the output on this display so you're not blinding yourself at night. Let's go over to auto scan. That's gonna be if you set up other cameras, you wanna scan for them. There is a... Uh, a pair button on the cameras you would hit that and then you will go auto scan on here and pick up the cameras right now we only have one camera like i said you can have up to four cameras let's keep going now we are on park line you could have an on and off or i just want to show you how you could adjust this uh, let's go back wait go back here screwed that up sorry guys here here all right so you could adjust how you want these uh, guidelines. Really gonna have to calibrate this with somebody standing behind your rig to get a, uh, a good idea of where you're at uh, as far as how wide your rig is. I don't know how this is working right now. When we get to a campground, I'll have MJ stand outside, you know, toward the passenger side and kind of 
uh, calibrate it that way. You could also shut those off if you don't want them displayed. Let's go keep going. You have your record mode. Uh, you can turn it on and off. Right now we are recording. So this is gonna allow this camera set up to function for two different things. So now it's a monitor and it's actually a security camera, right? So you're able to see behind you during traffic and if you park somewhere at a truck stop, at a Walmart, or even a, a secluded campground, or you just wanna see what's going on when you're not in the rig, you have your camera there. So you have a security camera, you have a 200, up to 256 gig uh, SD card. It's not included, so you can put whatever SD card you want. And then it'll just keep recording until that battery dies or if you're hardwire it'll just keep recording and it'll overwrite itself as it you know goes over to 256 gigs okay so that's a really good option there let's keep going uh we're gonna go to play mode here i'll hit okay and you can see here there should be here are some uh, recordings we have i'll hit okay and let's see here all right, so this is a recording from earlier today. You can see, I mean, it's it's pretty clear. So if you have you know something that you're holding on to that you have on the rig and you wanna make sure that it's secured, you know, here's a camera that allows you to do that and it's always recording. And now let's go to the final function here and that's not gonna be really necessary for us now. It's gonna be the pairing mode and you're gonna hit the, the pair key on your camera and then it's gonna start scanning for it. Right now, we only have one camera installed, so that's not really in play for us right now. So let's go back to the menu. All right, so there it is. We have this set up angled. Uh, we're gonna be driving this way. I have the camera here shooting straight back. We have this camera shooting down. I can't wait to get on the road. This antenna is adjustable, okay? Actually, I don't even think I need the antenna. So guys, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I'm hoping this holds up really well. Uh, Halo View again, uh, just the disclaimer, this was sent to us for free. They've reached out to us and asked us to do a review, an unboxing, install, and review. We've done the unboxing, we've done the install. We're gonna hold on to it for a couple of weeks and then we're gonna come back with another, another video on a full review. So if you guys are thinking about getting this, um, there will be a link down below. Certainly use that link. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is a pretty easy install. Again, you could hardwire it, you could battery wire it. There are many dis different options, and this is not the only model Halo View uses. This just happens to be their long distance model. So this is for up to, uh, I believe, 1,200 feet, which is, I mean, that's more than enough for anything. But they have lower cost models that uh, it, it's not, they're not as expensive. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up comment below like subscribe and share and we thank you guys for watching us and we hope to see you on the road